All right, here we go. We're going to talk about one of my favorite topics, which is sewage treatment, because uh, sewage treatment starts with absolutely gross, disgusting, filthy water, and you end up with maybe some beautiful clean water over here. So um, realize we're, we're going to we're going to make a drawing. It's going to have a lot of stuff on this page. So in your notebook, you maybe want to turn your notebook over so that it's uh, the paper's longer here than here, right? So it's kind of like hot dog, or what do they say, hot dog version there, landscape. Um, and we're gonna only use the top half of that page to, right now, because that bottom half is gonna be for something else. And we're gonna divide it up pretty much into three equal parts, all right? So I just wanna make sure you have enough room. So there's gonna be a part here, right? And this is the first part of sewage treatment, believe it or not, is called primary treatment. Okay, the second part is called secondary treatment. And the third part is called tertiary treatment. All right, so what do we start with? We start with dirty water, right? And so dirty water is going to have poop in it. It's going to have urine. It's going to have um, rocks because, you know, that's what you wash off your hands is soil, which has just got rocks in it. Um, sure this is focused. There we go. Um, we're also going to have things like uh, cleaners, you know, soaps and things like that. Um, people flush things, maybe they shouldn't. They flush condoms down the toilet. They flush tampons down the toilet. Think of all the things you flush down the toilet. Um, certainly there's food, people put into garbage disposal. Um, Instead of cleaning your brushes outside, you should be cleaning your brushes, paint brushes inside. So we're going to have paint. People flush drugs, even if it's like used drug, drugs that maybe were expired. You're not supposed to do that anymore. We'll see why. But also just drugs that come out in your pee, right? Um, so we have paper because there's a lot of toilet paper, um, toothpaste, you know, you name it. There's a whole bunch of stuff. And all of this, all of this stuff, is going into sewage treatment. So how are we gonna remove, what's the first thing we're gonna take out? Um, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pass it through a screen, just a large screen. Um, you can't pass it through a filter because this it, it would just get clogged right away. In fact, this screen is actually constantly moving. As the water gets pumped through here, the water will come out, but the, the other stuff gets stuck on here, the paper and the condoms and and it kind of conveyors out and just gets dumped into a truck right there. Um, we call this the grit filter. It's the very first part of sewage treatment. And we're just taking out the big stuff. Right? We're just taking out the big stuff. The plastic, the rocks, right? Things like that. Um, we still have really messy water, but it's lacking the big stuff. So as much as possible, we're going to try to use nature as our model. How does nature clean water? Well, water will eventually go into a lake, right? It'll eventually go into a lake and it will settle. And a lot of the junk is just gonna settle at the bottom. Now, this is not just a tank. This is actually a long pathway with baffles in it. So it kind of slows the water down. And little by little, since it's so calm, a lot of the solids just settle, right? So this is the heavy stuff. Okay, and so this is a settling tank. And so we've taken out the big stuff, and now we've taken out the heavy stuff. This water's a lot cleaner, you know, I wouldn't drink it obviously, but that's pretty much the end of primary treatment. That's about as much as, as a municipalities cleaned their water for a long time. But as people started becoming more populated in areas and the water needed to be cleaner, we add, needed to add the secondary step. Secondary step is the most important step. It's where we clean most of the stuff. What, what is this stuff here? We've taken out a lot of the plastic and rubber things and rocks. Um, what's left here is organic material. Well, how does nature take care of organic material? Old organic material gets eaten by bacteria. So we just got to give it an opportunity to be eaten by bacteria. We need to make a bacteria party. That's so. This is the um, this is the uh, primary clarifier. Ooh, clarif 
fire. This is really uh, an aeration tank. It's called the primary clarifier, but it's an aeration tank. And so what we're going to do is we want to keep those bacteria happy. So we're going to pump a whole bunch of air in there. And this is bubbling up. This is moving around and swirling around. Well, this is a this is basically a, a bacteria party. I mean, this is really happening here. A lot of what sewage treatment operators do is they got to keep these bacteria and microorganisms super happy because that's what's doing the most important step. So this is the most important step, right? So these bacteria and microorganisms uh, break down organic material. Now organic is a word that gets used for many things, but organic just means from life. So um, we have that bacteria party. Um, this is dark brown because it's so rich with microorganisms. So when the water comes out of here, we still haven't taken anything out. A lot, we put it up here, a lot of CO2 comes out of here because we're breaking things down. But we still got little bits and stuff. And again, what nature would do is it would just put it through another settling tank, another little lake, settling tank. And so um, this settling tank, the particles are much smaller than in this one, so it needs a little help. So we're gonna add a coagulant. A coagulant is something like alum, which is a mineral that just kind of helps things get stick together. It's kind of a catalyst to make the little things turn into big things so that they stick together, right? And so what comes out of here, what comes out of here is sludge. They call that sludge. Okay, so we're gonna keep on going, keep on going. Um, actually, that's the end of the story for a long time. Primary takes the big stuff out, secondary really got rid of almost all the organic stuff. And so that was good enough. We put that in the ocean or we put that in the uh, river and that's the end of, of sewage treatment until recently when again, we needed it to be cleaner. And so, you know, if you think about it, how would nature clean water so clean that you, that you would drink it? Well, when it passes underground and goes through a bunch of sand or gravel, in this case, we're just doing sand, this is our sand filter, okay? When we go through our sand filter, all the little bacteria and little tiny particles are gonna get stuck to the sand, and what comes out here is very clean water. So this is the beginning of tertiary treatment. You put it through a sand filter, but you still wouldn't wanna drink this. Why? It's gonna have some bacteria in there, right? And so what they would normally do is they would add chlorine, but chlorine is dangerous, it's toxic, so a much safer alternative, which is more and more people doing now, you actually have this bank of UV lights. So you hit this with a bunch of UV lights and it's gotta be close. They have these uh, lights that come within an inch or two of all of the water down through these pipes. And what it does is it doesn't kill the bacteria, it's the UV light um, damages the bacteria, bacterial DNA. If it just bit damages the DNA, it can't reproduce. If it can't reproduce, it's not dangerous. So now you have your clean water. You've gotten the big stuff out. You've biologically removed through metabolism, through you know uh, respiration. You've, you've broken down all the organic stuff and then you've really cleaned it in tertiary. And now you have clean water. So what are you gonna do with this water? You know, we've got three things we can do with this water. Um, because some of us, we're not ready to drink it. Although in Europe they're doing this, and even in California they're starting to do that. We can certainly use it for agriculture, right? Put it on crops. It's clean enough to put on crops. At my school, we use it to flush toilets because uh, we were right across the street from the, street, uh, the, the uh, sewage treatment plant. So you can have a whole series of pipes that is used for sprinkling grass or, or agriculture, or you can use it in toilets. Um, you can also just put it back in the environment. It's clean enough to put back in the environment, perhaps, or you could drink it. Now, why wouldn't you wanna, why wouldn't you wanna drink it? 
what, what does make it all the way through? Turns out there's a few things that come through. Salts come through, but I'm not too concerned about that. That's total dissolved solids um, because salts can't get stopped by any of these, any of these things. Um, they're smaller than any kind of filter. Um, also nitrates, nitrates make it through. That, and that is a problem. Remember we said that uh, sewage treatment is a, uh, is a uh, source of nitrogen pollution in our streams because out of a sewage treatment plant, you have elevated levels of nitrate. So that's an issue we got to deal with. And then we have pharmaceuticals. Um, any kind of drug that's not natural, like acetaminophen or ibuprofen, isn't going to be broken down by natural systems. And so it's going to be in elevated amounts here. And so we got to deal with those things. So, oops, you can't see my, my pharmaceuticals. There you go, pharmaceuticals. So, um, so let's think about what we have here. Um, we have got some clean water, but we have a few things still left in the clean water. We've got our sludge to deal with. That would normally go to the landfill. We've got this heavy stuff, right, that we take out originally, and that would go to the landfill. And then we have this stuff, which definitely has to go to the landfill. But in the next video, we're going to do the super cool features of sewage treatment, which is going to deal with all these things.